Hi, Dale coming to you from Bronk Built Headquarters again, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I make wooden jack-o'-lanterns. Now, I may make mine a little differently than you've seen before on YouTube, and at the end, I put a little twist on mine. I'm going to be making two three-set collections. That sounded a little weird. I'm going to be making two sets of three jack-o'-lanterns. These are super cheap and all in, I don't think I'm over 20 bucks, if even that. Now, while I'm not going to be selling mine in my area, these sell for anywhere between $15 and $20 each. That's each, not per set. So for those of you that want to make a quick buck, these work great. So please hang around and I'll show you how I turn these inexpensive fence pickets into great Halloween decorations. Come on, let's go. The first step is to give them a quick sand. Some people will run them through the planer, which is perfectly fine, but I wanted to keep as much of the thickness as possible. You're not making fancy jewelry boxes here, so you don't need these to be super smooth. I run a quick 80 grit over each side to just remove the fuzzies and any splinters that might be sticking out. Now it's time to cut all the pieces to length. Both sets of three that I'm making will have one 7 inch, one 10 inch, and one 13 inch tall face. Of course the weather's changing now so I'm constantly having to shoo away these little pests. I cut 18 pieces at 7 inches six pieces at 10 inches, and six pieces at 13 inches, but you can change that to be whatever size you want. Come on, dude, I'm a zombie now. Let me eat your brain. For the last eight years, I've been going to some of the finest art schools around, really honing in my skills, and now I get to put them to use. I draw six different jack-o'-lantern faces on the illuminaries. There are several ways to cut out the faces. I chose to use my router in my router table. I felt I'd be able to keep good control this way. I'm using a spiral bit raised just over the top of the boards. I could have plunge cut into this, but I decided to drill a hole in each area to start the router bit in. I could have used my scroll saw, and that would have given me the absolute best control and would have been very safe, but I felt it would have been a bit of a pain and a time killer to have to detach the blade and reset for each portion of each face. I could have used my jigsaw as well, but I didn't think that would give me quite the control that I wanted. I also could have used my handheld palm router, but I felt using the router sled gave me a bit more control and was a bit safer. The only other option I could think of was to buy a beaver and train it to chew out the templates I drew. But with supply chain issues as they are, it would have taken at least 10 weeks to get the beaver delivered and then another 13 weeks to train it, so I didn't use that option either. Oh, I suppose I could have used my coping saw and cut all these out by hand. But come on, you know I'm not going to be doing that. Each jack-o'-lantern would have had three pieces cut at its specific height. That would be one front, one back, and the remaining piece would be used for the sides. I now take the remaining piece from each of the six jack-o'-lanterns and I rip them into two side pieces. Rather than try to rip them exactly down the center, I simply rip them at two and a half inches each. This will give plenty of room for you to get your hand down to the inside bottom for a candle, and more on that later. It's time to assemble the front, back, and sides. For this, I'm going to use brad nails and Typhon 3. I'm using Typhon 3 because they're going to be outside, although where we're going to put it, it's going to be under cover and not really in the weather, but I have it on hand, so why not? Really doesn't get any simpler than this. The next step is simply adding a bottom and a top. I'm going to start with the bottoms as those are going to be glued and brad nailed into place for a permanent attachment. You don't need to be super accurate with placement if you don't want to. 
I'm roughly checking for center, but you could simply do this by eye if you want to. Just make sure you double check your brad nail placement so that you don't miss the side pieces. Remember the small pieces with the dog ears that were left over after the initial cutting to size? I hope you didn't toss those into the burn pit as these will make for perfect pumpkin stems. I use my table saw sled to make short work out of cutting six stems from the pieces that were left over. To attach the stems to the tops, I clamp the stem to the side of my workbench since I don't have a vise, add some glue, set the top on centering the stem by eye, and drive in a few brad nails to hold it while the glue dries. Really couldn't be any easier than this. There really is plenty of room for your hand to place the candles in. Here is what they look like both in the light and in the dark. I think they look pretty good, but I've never really been a fan of seeing the candles on the bottom. To fix that, I attach my candles to the underside of the top. You can use double-sided tape or what I'm doing here, the old blue tape and Starbond glue trick. My favorite is star bonding on magnets to the tea light and the underside of the top. And here's what they look like with the tea lights on the underside of the top in both daylight and the dark. I hope you'll agree with me that this extra step is worth it. And now for the very controversial tip. I'm sure some of you will like this and others will utterly hate it. If you want some extra shine, you can take some tin foil, crumble it up some, and then form fit it to the inside, back, and sides. This will add a lot of added reflective surface. You could even add some colored parchment paper to the inside front to give it an extra uniqueness. Here's what it looks like in the dark with tin foil. I did three with tin foil and three without so you could see the difference. Let me know in the comments below what you like and what you think about the tin foil tip overall. Don't worry, I can take it, so let me know. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, well, here they are. I know Halloween is just about here and gone, but these luminaries you can do instead of scary jack-o'-lanterns, you can do just fall luminaries and then Christmas luminaries because Christmas is coming up. Again, in my area, these are selling for about $15 each up to about $25 each. So go ahead and make yourself some extra cash. Hey, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. I answer every single comment. If you think I earned it, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified when I get new videos out. And until next time, see ya.